Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel on National Voters Registration Day. It's more important than ever that you be registered to vote. We have some hot button issues coming up and we want to get the right people in Congress. Yes, and the presidency. So, I was just keeping my eye on animals. Out for our morning stroll, I've got a really good update on a case that happened, a trial that happened back in 2014. You're not going to want to miss this. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Crafting Journey here, that journey chick on Instagram, and the leftovers on my other channel. If you want to check that out, the link is down in the description. That's where I do my full-time reselling business. I take undervalue items and I sell them for a profit on eBay. To scammers, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yes, we're going through the some growing pains of being a new business and the scammers are, are you know, are like trying to latch on. But you know what? I'm going to ride it out. So <laughs> thanks and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, this is where I describe live trials, give you something to listen to while you craft. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yes, he's my best friend. Everybody else thinks they're my best friend, but it's really the like button. So hit the like button. It really does help the algorithm. Do it before you leave on your way in or out. I'm watching Stitch. What is he up to? He's in the window. Well, he's on the fence. He's trying to, I think he's trying to climb a tree. A weird way. He's such a weird cat. He's meowing now. Hmm. He's after something. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Okay, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this content and ring the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode of Crafting and Crime Daily or anything else I might post, such as I've been trying to uh, stream Disney's, let me get it, get, let me get it right, Disney's Dreamlight Valley. Yes, I'm having fun doing that. Now, I feel I feel a little silly because it's it's a game for kids, I think, but it's fun and I'm having trouble with it. Uh, you know, these kids can probably figure it out like that, but not me, of course. So, <laughs> but it's fun. I'll be doing it part five today. I'm just doing a walkthrough. If you want to catch up, you can. If not, just tune in. Part five today at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Check that out. And what have I been up to? I got out the watercolors last night. Here's one painting that I did. I learned to do bluebells. I have this wonderful book. Oh my god, I am loving this book. Now, you can trace things out of this book, but I am not tracing. I'm just, um, you know, I see what the shape is, and I follow the instructions. And let me show you the bluebells, if I can find them. This is such a cool book. This one I've started. I haven't finished it, but it's going to look like that. And the other one. Oh, here. These are the bluebells. So this was my my attempt at the bluebells. And then I wanted to make a composition out of it. You know, I, I added a yellow rose and some other different types of foliage <laughs> flowers. Um, some of my flowers do not have names. I just like to um, fill in the blank spaces with fantasy flowers. So that's what I did on that one. Then I did another couple from this book that I turned. I thought turned out pretty cool. And then I was trying to just in the empty space just add some light background and I got too much purple here but I did add like some purple and some yellows in the background just to fill in the space but I'm loving these two flowers let me see what they're called let's see uh, let's see if I can find it okay what is this? She's, she, she has it in cursive, and I, I can read cursive, 
cover flowers, corn flowers. It's just a weird, oh, corn flower. It's just a weird font, that's all. all right, so these are corn flowers. That's what I've done here. And on this other, these are also corn flowers. Oh, cone flowers. <laughs> See, I can't read this font. Cone flower. All right, cone flowers, corn flowers, on the same page. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I would sit and play today. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe we could do some more cone flowers. How about that? Because those were kind of fun. All righty. Yeah. Put that. We're gonna finish that one later, I think. Let me get my palette wet. So how are we doing on National Voter Registration Day? Yep. I will tell you that I was part of a very historic vote here in Kansas recently where they had an amendment to change the Constitution to put in laws against abortion. And you had to vote, yes, do you want, do you want the Constitution to change or no? And the no's won, and I'm telling you, voters turned out overwhelmingly on this issue. So, um, and there are some hot button issues in every state coming up, so I urge you guys to get out and vote. Yes, yes, yes. So, I think what we're going to do is just paint and see where this takes us. I, I don't know if I'm going to do, well, I could do it in a different color. I don't know. Maybe let's just go for, which one is pink? See, I've got a different palette out here. I'm not sure what colors are what, but you know. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna push this one over here. I'm gonna add a little water. There we go. We don't want it so dark. I'm not even sure. I'm just gonna do my own flowers. Yeah. It's easier that way because I can talk and do this at the same time. When I do these other flowers, I really, I really have to concentrate. These are my fantasy flowers. So on my walk this morning, I mentioned um, that there was an interesting decision in a 14-year-old case. Well, let me tell you something. It is 23 years old, not 14. The um, Adnan Saeed spent 23 years in jail. Back in 2000, he was convicted of murdering Heyman Lee. She, they were both high school students in a high school near Baltimore. And she is found one day in this field dead. She was strangled. And Adnan and Heyman had dated, but they had recently broken up. So he is the victim of some really horrendous evidence. Um, just, just the star witness who, well, let me back up a little bit. Here's how I learned about this case. This case was the part of a podcast called Serial, which, oh my gosh, if you, if you ever get a chance to check out the Serial podcast, it's fantastic. Um, and since being covered, that was in 2014 that the Serial podcast covered this case of Adnan Saeed. It was 12 episodes and I, that's, that's when I learned about this case. And after listening to the 12 episodes, I was stymied. Like, why is this guy in jail? And because the evidence just did not add up. They had a star witness, Jay, who kept changing his story. Sometimes I have trouble, sometimes I have to turn the paper. Some people can just do this whole thing and not ever have to turn the paper. But not me. And Adnan 
the whole time this podcast is going on, the uh, reporter, she's been in, t- she stays in touch with him. They have these jail phone calls and he has professed his innocence uh, over and over again. You know, I did not do this. So the star witness, this guy named Jay, he gets on and he says that he helped Adnan bury the body or helped him dump the body, that he gets a call from Adnan, he sees the body in the trunk and he goes and he helps Adnan. Well, the problem with that is that nobody could verify this story. Um, And he kept changing his story. So that was a problem. And he went through several polygraphs, and we know polygraphs are not reliable. So here's what happens. In the state of Maryland, a law was passed recently in 2021 that said that anybody who's convicted as a juvenile um, and has served more than 20 years can move to have their conviction reduced, their sentence reduced, or just, you know, thrown out altogether. So Adnan's defense team files this motion because he was convicted when he was 17 years old. Well, he was arrested when he was 17 years old for something he did as a juvenile, allegedly. Um, And once this motion is filed, this young prosecutor named Becky Feldman picks up the case and she starts looking at it and things are not adding up. And this is, you know, what people have been saying this for years. People that listen to the serial podcast, people that have, um, that, you know, since that serial podcast, there was documentaries, other podcasts. I think there may have been a movie, but none of them got Adnan released from jail. So this prosecutor, she starts looking at the file and lo and behold, she gets, she goes to the courthouse and she says, you know, I want to copy the file. Well, it's 14 boxes. So the guy says, here's some paper, knock yourself out. So she goes, she copies the first seven boxes. And as she's going through these boxes, she finds some handwritten notes from the prior prosecutor about another alleged suspect. And no one ever investigates this other alleged suspect. In fact, there were two other suspects that should have been investigated. One turned out to be a serial rapist and is now in jail for that. So once she starts looking at this file and she realized, so she calls up the defense counsel and she said, had you ever seen these notes? And they're like, no, we've. We didn't know any of this information, which is what's called a Brady violation. You know, any information that you have regarding that could, you know, be exculpatory towards your client, in other words, another suspect, uh, you have to reveal that to the other side. This was never revealed. So that's a huge violation there. Then she starts looking at the rest of the file and she finds out that the officer that was investigating or that was doing, he was one of two lead investigators. He's the one doing the interviews of this guy, you know, the star witness, Jay. Just as an aside, he is convicted in another case for tampering with the evidence, manipulating the evidence, and, you know, his interview tactics, so, are found to be faulty, so... Can we rely on Jay's testimony? Yes. Then she looks at the cell phone records and she calls some cell phone experts and she they tell her, no, you cannot rely on this on on this evidence that was used back in 2000. This the, you, it was based on incoming phone calls and you just can't rely on that. Um, the location, I don't know if they had location data, but they were trying to locate or pinpoint where he was based on incoming calls. And they cell phone people said, you just, that can't be done. Then they went back and 
had everything tested for Adnan's DNA, and so far everything has come back inconclusive. So Becky says, I have some overwhelming cause for concern here with this file. So the prosecutor, Becky, files a motion to vacate his sentence. So that hearing took place yesterday. And interesting, interestingly enough, Heyman Lee's brother um, asked the court to continue this hearing because he said, I didn't get enough notice for this hearing and I want to be there in person. And she said, no, I'm not continuing this hearing. We're going to have a hearing. If you want to be heard, you better get on a Zoom, and um, which is what he did. So he got on to the Zoom and he was heard during the hearing. And basically he just said, you know, I want, I want my sister's real killer to be found. You know, if it's not him, I just want the court to do the right thing. Um, so the court, having heard everything that I just told you, which was, you know, just sort of cursory, um, dismissed his charges, asked the shackles be taken off of him after 23 years, and Adnan Saeed walked out of prison yesterday. And I think rightfully so. And it is very doubtful that he will be retried. It is, especially since this was the prosecution's motion to vacate the conviction, I doubt very seriously if they will retry it. I mean, since this thing was never investigated properly to begin with, I doubt they want to retry it. It's so sad. It makes you wonder how many people are behind bars on wrongful convictions. And she, the prosecutor is just saying, she's not saying he's innocent. She, she says, you know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the whoever prosecuted this case for, to begin with didn't investigate it properly. Okay. So what's going on with our friend Alex Jones? Um, there's rumors that he's expected to testify this week, that he will be in, he's supposed to be in Connecticut this week. So we'll see if that actually happens. But the corporate representative is still on the stand, yes. They're do What they're doing is they're getting in a lot of, um, of the footage of his shows and different things in through the corporate representative, which, I mean, that's, that's one way to try a case. And in the George Wagner case, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, they're still on the stand. And what they did yesterday was they talked about this outhouse that was on the property of Chris Sr. And um, it was clear to them that someone had broke into that outhouse. There was a camera on the uh, property. They followed the camera to see if the leads would send them to a recording device. And they followed that. And when they got to the end, the recording device was not there. Now, what was in the outhouse? Um, well, I think the camera was on the outhouse, but there was a huge safe. They used the jaws of life to break into the safe. Guess what was in this safe? Oh, my word. 16 long guns. This must have been one huge safe. 16 long guns, several handguns, bags of drugs, and $20,000. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? 
$20,000 in all those guns. Well, I told you the rodents were not <laughs> without their own faults. Wow. So, yes, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation is still on the stand describing the first crime scene in the George Wagner case. So that's where we're at with that. So what happened this day in history? Let's talk about that. Well, I add some greenery to the flowers, shall we? JFK, he takes office in 1960. In 1961, he announces that, you know, we're going to put a man on the moon. Now, the government's very concerned about this statement because they're, they're saying, you know, this is going to cost us $20 million. Yes, this is not going to be cheap. And uh, so he proposes that we do this with the Soviet Union, that we go to the moon together. Now, this is, is received um, okay by the Soviet Union. They're like, you know, not entirely enthusiastic, but, you know, they're like, oh, okay, you know. But just a few months after he proposes this, four months later, he's assassinated. Lyndon B. Johnson takes office and just scraps the whole idea. <laughs> And we do finally send a man to the moon in much water. So I just want to finish putting the greenery in here. All right, now we need, I'm going to go with a different color green for the other flowers. Let's do this sort of a Kelly green and it's really these are really mushy, these. I'm using Artestro watercolors. They're not like my Windsor Newton ones, but you know, I think my Windsor Newton ones are the, my favorite, but they're okay. All right, let's just draw some little lines here. There we go. That looks pretty. Let's put some leaves on here. Yeah. I like it a lot. Okay. Always try to find something you love about what you're doing. Yeah. There you go. That's this morning's painting without too much concentration. Now, if I were concentrating, I could maybe do something like this. But when I'm not concentrating and I'm talking, I need to fill in this middle part here, don't I? Let's put some glitter, like maybe some gold. That would be pretty. All right, let's do some gold. In the middle here, just, you know, because we can. It'll be glittery. And this gold glitter, it doesn't really, you don't really see it well until it dries. So we're just kind of putting some gold there. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. Now we could put some silver on the other one. I just like to play. <laughs> silver and gold, silver and gold. There's not really a center on this one, but we're going to make one. We're just going to put some silver in here. There. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I'm not, I'm not even sure you can see it because it's... I'll try to put it up close. Yeah, you can't really see it. Uh, eh, maybe when it dries. I don't know. Okay, guys. That's the show for today. 
I hope you had fun. I will see you tomorrow in Crafting and Crime Daily or maybe tonight in Disney's Dreamlight Valley at 6.30 p.m. I'll be streaming the game and uh, just having some fun. It's my one hour of the day where I just let everything go and I just get goofy and play my game. So I'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Bye.